Okay guys, welcome back to another pregnancy update. Um, as you can clearly see, I am no longer pregnant. So this is Remy Thomas Dickey. He was born January 22nd. Look at the little face. Hi little baby, can we say hi? Oh, he woke up for the video. Regan Carmel Dickey. Born January 22nd, and I'm just gonna go. Oh, I die. And then we're gonna talk about our birth story. So they were born when I was 35 weeks and six days pregnant. So I was Tuesday was the day they were born. As you know, I was filming Wednesday to Wednesday for my pregnancy updates. So I never had a chance to film week 35 so real quick I'll just tell you it was miserable I was at the point where it was just super uncomfortable and I was struggling so the fact that they decided to come was like a blessing in disguise because I don't know if I could have made it I'm sure I could have but I was struggling so I'm glad that they showed up because I was I reached a breaking point so I'll just go over what happened so Monday January 21st I was woke up feeling um, like a sharp pain on this side which was a reoccurring thing throughout the last couple weeks of the pregnancy it was her head was like right here so I didn't really think that much of it but it continued to get worse and it wasn't going away and so it just to be cautious I called my doctor and since preeclampsia is a higher risk in twin moms she had me go she said you should go down to McGee and just get checked so rather be safe than sorry so we went down Logan Tom and I to McGee and I checked into triage and they checked me they kept me there for a couple hours long story short everything looked good I was having contractions. They hooked me up to the monitor and you can clearly see I was having contractions. They were consistent, but they weren't too strong. I wasn't, I was dilated at a one and 40% effaced. So that wasn't enough for them to keep me. So they sent me home. So on the way home, I like turned to Tom and I was like, I don't think I could do this anymore. Like I am to this point in the pregnancy where like just sitting is uncomfortable. So and I was only measuring 41 weeks pregnant. I know there's women that have twins or multiples and they measure like 52 weeks pregnant. So I don't know how they do it. They're amazing. So we got home that night. I had to eat standing up because it was hard for me to like sit down and do anything really. I blew up the birthing ball that I have, like the exercise ball, just to bounce to get some relief. And they were contracting contractions, but they weren't as intense is I remembered them being with Logan. Obviously, I wasn't in full-on labor, but the contractions were like across my stomach here. So I was like, these aren't these aren't real contractions. They're probably just Braxton Hicks. So we went to sleep, and around midnight, I got up to get a glass of water. And as I was reaching for the water, my water broke. It was like a, and then just the floodgates were open. So it was a rush of water and I woke up Tom and I said my water just broke I called my doctor he called my mom to come watch Logan and we packed our hospital bags because I still hadn't I had everything ready but everything was just kind of it wasn't in a bag so I never even got to film my what's in my hospital bag but I will I am going to do a video on what I took and what I had and, and like what I find helpful but so everything was there threw everything in the bag Got in the car, went down to McGee, back to triage. All right, update. It is 1.30ish um, on January 23rd, 22nd. 22nd. 22nd, and my water broke about an hour ago. And we are in triage. Tom's with me. We were just here earlier today because I've been having contractions like consistently throughout the day, but they didn't keep me because I wasn't dilated or progressing or anything, so they sent us home. Now we're back, so we'll keep you posted. They checked me. They were like, "Yep, your water broke." Update. It is now three eleven. Three eleven. Water did break. 
um, hooked up to these pretty machines to monitor the babies, contractions, heart rate, and we signed the consent form for the C-section. Now we're just waiting on the anesthesiologist to arrive to go over all the fun stuff about the spinal block I'm about to get, and we will be meeting the babies, I guess, tonight. So... In this morning? This morning. So. Babies, you're early. Because I had, you know, called my doctor, they were expecting me. They were already prepping the OR. They came in, you know, it was probably like, man, we got there probably around 12, 45, 1 o'clock. And the babies were born at, Remy was born at 4.36 and uh, Reagan was born at 4.38. So that just kept, tells you my w water broke at midnight and 4.30 the babies were born. So it was like a fast process. So got prepped for OR, they took me back. We had like, the babies had a team of nurses. I had my doctor, my doctors had a nurse. I had an anesthesiologist, a nurse anesthetist, and a nurse assistant apprentice. Tom was in the OR, so there was probably like 20 people all there. I felt so important. They were going to give me a spinal blockage, and the needle didn't go all the way through, so they removed that, and then they ended up giving me an epidural. epidural. So I had both. I had the spinal and an epidural. So he said, the doctor was like, your legs are probably going to go numb in about five minutes less than five minutes and I was like what are legs they were poking me with a little it looked like a little tack to make sure I was numb and I was like I don't even feel that so the last sensation that I remember really feeling other than like the pressure that you can feel was them rubbing iodine on my stomach so I said to Tom like I'm bracing myself for that like mental incision that they were gonna make and I'm like closing my eyes the whole time and I said, did they make the incision yet? And Tom's like, oh, Anna, they're way past that. Like the babies are almost out. Okay, the C-section went, everything went well, everything was smooth. Did oh, you get any better? It was very weird. Um, it was totally different than my experience with Logan, but it was just as special because these two little guys were born. So yeah, Tom called the time on <laughs> when they were born. He's like, she said, call time, you know, baby A. He's like, 4.36. And then baby B was born and two minutes later at 4.38. And we got to, Tom got to hold them. And we got a picture. And the nurses were amazing. They got pictures, like, of us in the OR. I can't say enough great things about my doctor and everybody that I encountered during the C-section. And the whole entire hospital stay was everybody was fantastic like McGee is amazing so I was working myself up for no reason everything went great so after the c-section they took us into recovery update it's a boy and a girl we had what time was it? I want to say around 4 30 a little after babies came out little baby boys over there he doesn't have a name yet and baby girl's name we think, I'm not going to say what it is yet, but we think we have a name for her. Everything went good. But she was five pounds, two ounces? No, she was five pounds, nine ounces, and he was five pounds, five pounds two, two ounces. ounces. Right here. Thank you, it's I keep shaking. I already got to breastfeed him. Got to breastfeed baby boy, but baby girl just didn't want to open her mouth wide enough. And then her temperature was a little bit low, so they took her down to do a couple tests, and we'll get to see her again in about 45 minutes to an hour, they said. So, and then little baby boy's under the heater right now. And he fed, he was a really good eater. And I'm still shaking. So. And they said that little baby girl here wasn't breathing like she should be. So I tried to nurse them both at the same time 
for the first time and I got to hold them and um, he was doing well. They did take him down to get further testing but unfortunately little Mr. Reagan wasn't quite baked yet so she had to spend some time in the NICU. So that was kind of expected. I had a feeling that if they were born around when they were that they would maybe there was a potential of NICU time but you know hearing your baby's going to go to the NICU is not anything fun but we were fortunate enough that she got to come home and she only spent a couple days there. So she's my little NICU baby. Other than that, it's it's kind of a blur. They give you so much medicine in the hospital and you know nurses are coming in all the time checking your vitals and doing all that fun stuff. They're doing tests on the babies to make sure that their hearing's okay and their blood pressure's okay and their sugars are okay and all that fun stuff. So overall, it was a different experience than my first, but it was just a special and now we have these guys. So yeah, that's my birth story. Oh, I'm feeling surprisingly well for this. This is day eight and my incision site and everything is like already he like healing really well. I've been taking it easy. My mom has been watching Logan. He's been staying at her house. Last night was the first night he came home. Everything was good. He slept through the night and Tom's been lifting him in and out of his crib and onto his changing table and stuff like that. So I've been listening to what the doctors say and doing my best to resting as much as possible. I know it's so hard whenever you have a mo you're a new mom, but especially with twins and then a 15 month old. So I'm taking it easy, as easy as I can. But I will show you, I guess it's no longer a bump shot, but so this is my belly band. This is eight days postpartum. So there's without my belly band, my day, my stomach. Not too bad. I really like that it gave this to me in the hospital, this band. And I've been nursing. Nursing has been going amazing. I've been pumping because I want to, because they're so small. In the NICU, they had Reagan on a really strict eating schedule. She ate every three hours on the nose. They would try to feed her. If she didn't eat every 15 minutes, they would try until she ate. So we tried to implement the same sort of schedule onto Remy because whenever we brought them home I wanted them to be on the same schedule. So they've been eating at 3, 6, 9, and 12 around the clock within the hour and it's been working pretty well. Um, the first night was rough but I mean I didn't expect it to be a cakewalk and then they wake up, they eat, and they usually go back to sleep. So, so far so good. Let's see if I could hold them both at the same time. So here are my babies. All right. Say goodbye. I'm sorry to say. Goodbye.